Hello there. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to set up a simple Discord Python bot and get it running locally. So let's just get started. What we need to do is first make a folder for the project. And I'm going to make it a Git repository and open it in Visual Studio Code. But you can, of course, use the editor of your choosing. So I do recommend that you start with making a virtual environment where we're going to install all the packages we need to get this bot up and running. So to do that, we open a terminal and write Python M and then VNB and the name of the virtual environment, which I'm just going to call VNB as well. There we go, we initialized. And once that's done, we can activate it. The way you activate it on Linux and Mac OS is by typing source, the name of the virtual environment, bin and activate. There we go. And on Windows, you can use the command I have written on the screen right now. Now to install the packages, we need to run either this command or this command down here, depending on if you're on Linux, Mac OS or Windows. So I'm on Linux, so I'm going to run this command right here. So let's do that. There we go. And now for the next command, I'm going to also install this optional voice support uh, library, which you don't have to, but I'm going to do it because we might need that later. And there we go. Cool. Right, so we've installed all the packages so we can actually get started programming this thing. So let's just make a new file and call it bot.py and start by importing discord and importing the commands that we need. Oh, okay, yeah, that's fine. This is just a Visual Studio Code thing. Go ahead and do that, Visual Studio Code. Um, all right, from Discord ext import commands. We're going to need this when we will decorate our functions with the built-in decorators of the Discord uh, Pi API, which actually rhymes. So go ahead and initialize the client by calling discord.client. This is a class built in API here. And also start by using the commands uh, bot class here to specify a prefix for the commands. So I am going to use the prefix exclamation mark, but you can use something else like, let's say uh, you could use slash or, or like uh, underscore, whatever you want. I'm just going to use exclamation mark. And now we can get started on defining the main events that we need. So first of all, we need to have a function which will be called when the bot is ready. So to do that, we need to decorate a function using the event decorator. And then we use, uh, we define an asynchronous function called on ready. It needs to be called on ready because this is what the API expects. And let's just, you know, write something simple like, uh, let's say the bot with name client dot user dot name. Now there's a bunch of like uh, properties within the client and within the user object that you can use. I'll link the official Discord API in the description where you can check out what you can actually uh, access in terms of properties. All right, let's just set up with this. And let's also make another uh, asynchronous function here, which is called on message. And this is also a built-in one, a built-in event that exists in the API, which takes a message as input. And then we want to process this message. So basically, every time a message is sent to the bot, this message, uh, this function will be invoked. And we need to process this message as a command if it is a command. If it's not, nothing will happen. All right. Another thing we need to do, I guess, is just to make a simple command here which is actually something that you can call in our bot. Right now you can't really execute any commands because there aren't any. 
So let's make another asynchronous function called terminate, which takes a context as input. So every command that you make takes this context as input because we have decorated our function with this command decorator. I'll explain it in more detail in a bit. So let's just get something up and running. So we just want something that that makes us able to actually get this bot to log out, which is what we do here. So now we have defined the onReady function and an onMessage function so we can process commands and just a simple function that we've made ourselves a single command, meaning the bot will log out and terminate. Cool. Now the last thing we need to write is actually we need to start the bot. So we use client.run and then we need to give it a token here. And this brings us to the next part of this tutorial where we will be taking a look at how to actually register this bot within Discord and inviting it to our server. Let's do that. Okay, so we've made the code that runs our bot. But we also need to create it in here. So go to this website right here. I'll post the link in the video description and log in with your Discord account. And then you want to make a new application. So let's just call this uh, Discord bot, I guess. Like that. And once we've done this, we need to actually specify that this application is in fact a bot. So go to bot and then add one here. Okay, so we can also give it a name. Let's call it the Terminator. Yeah, why not? You can also upload a, an image. And you can make it public or private, depending on if you want other people to be able to invite it and stuff. And you can uh, look at the different permissions and what uh, integer this will generate, because this will be relevant when you give the link that you need to invite the bot using to someone else. Uh, you have specified using that link what by this integer what permissions the bot will have. So let's go in here and say okay if it's, it's a bot we want this link. This is the link you need to invite the bot using. So if you want to give it administrator rights you see that the permissions is going to be 8. If you want to give it some specific uh, combination of these it will change this integer here and thereby also change the permissions. So take this link and you just post this in your browser. You get to this place and then you can select the server where you want to invite the bot. Let's just authorize this and okay get the, to this and <laughs> now we need to make sure that we are not a bot ourselves so I guess that's all the cars I think verify all right cool so we've authorized the bot to our server and here it is there it is uh, you can see I just made the quick test early on welcome the terminator so right now it's offline and that's because the bot is not running anywhere. Now in order to actually run the bot, we need the token from our Discord developer portal. So go back to the bot and you can copy the token from here. Now keep in mind this is secret, don't show this to anyone. This is essentially a password for the bot. Everyone or anyone who has this link with this token can run the bot. So just keep that in mind. And you want to put uh, like put this in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a different file called keys.py and I'm going to initialize the token in here because that allows you to, if you want to, let's say, make a git repository of this, you can just git ignore this like so. Uh, let's also ignore the virtual environment. And yeah, and you can post it in here and you can just say keys dot 
uh, token and you of course need to import it as well import keys there we go this is just a tip i guess all right once you've done this open up your terminal again and now let's actually try and run the bot so type python and then you just want to uh, run your bot script with python bot py and it should run and yes okay so it wrote to the terminal but the terminator initializing that's the name of the bot so it ran this line because it was ready and now we should see if we go back to our discord page here it is online and we can actually start interacting with it so let's try and do that the only command we have is terminate so it's kind of a <laughs> i'm going to do a whole lot yet but yeah terminate terminating there you go it went offline again and the script is done running and you can just start it again if you want but yeah that's basically all there is to it to make a very very simple bot and yeah from here you can do all, all kinds of stuff extend it with multiple commands and do a few different things now before wrapping up this video completely let's just add a few more things that make this bot a little bit better so first of all let's actually start by defining a variable called is client running make it a boolean and set it to false initially and we want to change this in here because what this function did was every time that the bot is ready then this function is called but it can happen if you go to the uh, like uh, api and go to on ready you will see what i mean there is this warning here it's not going to be guaranteed to only be called once. So that essentially means that, well, okay, if you can call it multiple times, this is going to be called oh, like run multiple times. And if you have multiple stuff in here, let's say you set up some stuff when the bot is initializing, that is going to be run multiple times, which can be a problem. So to avoid this, we would just, you know, add some very basic check to see if it's already running. If it's not, then you can start it and initialize it. And uh, if it's already running, it won't do it again. Now, another tip would be to make it so the bot doesn't reply to itself. So the way we would do this is just to check if the message uh, author is the same as the bot. Then we would just not process this message because let's say you have the bot uh, you know typing a response starting with an exclamation mark and that would also be uh, giving rise to this function being called again and it would process that command essentially if it's yeah if it starts with an exclamation mark and that could sort of go into an inf infinite loop which could be bad so let's just do this and it won't happen anymore now another thing you could do would be to say okay if you're processing the command which will happen here then let's just make the bot have this on typing stuff so if i start typing it's going to show that i'm typing we want the same for the bot that's really simple to do all you need to do is just say well if the message uh, starts with like the content of the message starts with exclamation mark then we know it's a, a command and then we want to Do this essentially this is built into the API this is not something we've defined and again you can find all this stuff in the documentation and yeah so this is essentially all you need to add just uh, you know a nice feature and uh, yeah I guess here at the end we can also make another command just for fun just to make the bot actually be able to do something other than terminating which is kind of you know not really anything oops okay so yeah so what do you want to do you want to use this decorator again on your asynchronous function let's say thing let's say it always takes this context object and we're just going to reply with pong why not it's not a very complicated function but there you go and 
Another thing I want to show you is that we can also add aliases like this. So you could say, okay, you have been terminated. So now you can actually, instead of writing terminate, exclamation mark terminate, you can also write exclamation mark, you have been terminated. And it will also call this function. Like this command will be processed in this call here. And yeah, I guess let's just go with this and start the bot again. So let's do that. Bot is going to start and we can go back to our browser and write ping. Hello. All right. It did it. So hello. Ping, 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 ping. A lot of times. Why not? But yeah, that's going to be it for this tutorial. In future tutorials, we're going to take a look at some more advanced features and also how to host this bot elsewhere, because now it's just running on your local machine, which is, you know, not really ideal, because if you turn off your, like, your PC, the bot is going to go offline, and you might not just want to host it on your own PC in the first place. But yeah, let's take a look at that in another video. So yeah, thanks for checking out this video, and I'll see you in the next one.